his disciples, Jesus said, A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. We find that in John chapter 13. We gather for worship, gather tonight to tell the old, old story, a story of bitterness and betrayal, of despair, denial, and death. We gather tonight to tell an even older story, prepared before the worlds began, a story of love powerful enough to rewrite our endings with the promise of new life. In the telling of the story, in the breaking of the bread, in the coming of the night, we draw near once more to Christ. We tell the story. The story of God is always the story of faithfulness, of going through the hard times together, of God's yes being louder than all our maybes. This chapter of the story begins during Passover, which Jesus celebrated with his friends. The celebration is overshadowed, however, by the threats against Jesus and by betrayal, one of his own selling him out. His words have been rejected. His time is coming to an end. Last Sunday, we shared in Holy Communion, remembering that Last Supper, praying that the Spirit of God would be poured out upon not only those gifts of bread and wine, but also upon us, gathered as the people of God. We remember with thanksgiving that nothing can separate us from the love of God. God is faithful, always, then, now, and forever. Tonight, we remember the events that followed. We meet up with Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, where he found both solace and danger. Jesus had warned them that they would become separated scattered like sheep without a shepherd because of what would happen to him but he said raised he would precede them and meet them in galilee peter assured jesus that he would be steadfast even if no one else was and jesus warned him that before dawn peter would disown him three times peter said he would die first he could never deny jesus and the sentiment was echoed by all the others. At the foot of the hill, there was an olive press, in Hebrew, Gethsemane. They went into the garden area there, and Jesus stationed his disciples in one location while he went in a little further to pray. He had Peter, James, and John go with him. Jesus was in great distress. He told these three how terribly sad he was, and to wait in one spot, and to be vigilant. He went just a bit further, before collapsing to the ground and praying. He prayed that God would deliver him, rather than allow this cup to be forced upon him. Still, he concluded, if it is your will. He checked up on Peter, James, and John, and found them asleep. He challenged Peter, what is this? You cannot stay awake with me even for an hour? Pray that you may be delivered. A time of testing is coming. Your heart is in the right place, but that doesn't mean you won't fail. Jesus went back and prayed again, pretty much a repeat of what he did the first time, and returned again to find them asleep. This time he let them sleep and he went back to pray alone. And again, pretty much the same thing. Finally, he returned to wake the disciples, telling them that time was up. The unrighteous had come out. They were already at the gate with the betrayer in the lead. Jesus hardly had time to get the words out when Judas was right there with the mob, carrying swords and clubs. They had come from the temple officers. Judas had made an arrangement, giving them a signal. The one I kiss is the man you're seeking. Arrest him. So he came directly to Jesus with a customary greeting and kiss. Jesus told him to get on with it. So the mob took hold of him and took him into custody. 
and one of those with Jesus drew a sword, swung it at the servant of the high priest, taking his ear off. Jesus told him to put the sword away. The sword played leads only to death. And besides, Jesus had at least twelve legions of angels he could summon at will, but doing so would obstruct the purposes of God revealed in Scripture. Jesus also addressed the posse that had been sent out for him. What do you take me for? A rebel? Is that why you need swords and clubs? I've been teaching in the temple day after day. Why not arrest me there? But no, you're just like all the prophets said you would be. Meanwhile, the rest of the disciples had made themselves scarce, leaving him to be arrested alone. The posse that had been sent out brought Jesus first to Caiaphas, who was high priest, and the scribes and elders had also been gathered. Peter had followed from a distance, going so far as the courtyard, and he sat there with the guards, wondering what would happen next. The balance of the narrative we will read tomorrow. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. May all the people hear what the Spirit of God is saying today. Lord, grant us your grace. Jesus prayed to the Father, whom he called Abba. Father he knew and loved. He prayed because he was hurting and sad and afraid, and because he trusted. So we join with Jesus in prayer. I invite you during the pauses to simply offer the names of those for whom you are praying, aloud or in silence. And after each pause, I will say, in your love, Lord. And the response is, hear our prayers. Lord, also in this e-space, this virtual garden, as night falls around us, we pray. We pray for those who are exhausted, out of energy, out of hope, out of faith, or out of tries, we pray for those who are exhausted. In your love, Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for those who are anxious, uncertain of the future, wary of the present, hearts and minds unable to find rest. We pray for those who are anxious. In your love, Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for those who despair, for whom the night has been too long, the grief too heavy, the comfort too shallow, we pray for those who are in despair. In your love, Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for those who are in pain tonight, whether body, mind, or soul. We pray for each in need of your healing touch. We pray for those in pain. In your love, Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for those who are too close to death tonight, whether they're entering your rest or grieving someone gone or haunted by what they've seen. We pray for those who are too close to death. In your love, Lord, hear our prayers. And Lord, we pray for ourselves, that we would have the strength to stay awake just a little longer, to, to stick by those we love, to take notice of the suffering, to trust that we're enough. Jesus didn't ask his friends to change his fate, only to stay with him, to stay with him as he met it. In your love, Lord, fill us with the kind of love that sticks around even while night is falling. And finally, give us the courage 
to pray as Jesus taught those same disciples, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Friends, the story we remember tonight is a story of deepest love. Love that would offer forgiveness, even to the traitor at its right hand. The bread was for us, the cup for us the cross for us we are forgiven not easily but the hard way we are forgiven not cheaply but wholly we are forgiven and we are freed praise be to god amen we go out to wait for the dawn not simply the dawn of good friday we know what happens there we go out to wait for a better dawn. The light is failing. We're failing too. But the ancient promise holds true. God does miracles at night. And in just a few days, the dawn will break. The light of the world will rise. We'll see new life. Hold fast. The story doesn't end here. Amen.